Uh, you got podcasting. I just launched my first episode of my podcast today. Oh, congrats. It's called Flipping Tables with Dope. D1. You heard me? Because uh, so much has been happening over the past year, I don't know how much you've been keeping up, man, but I've been in some pretty high profile uh, back and forth. Back and forth. I think it was with Meek and Rick Ross, right? Yeah, yeah, Jim Jones, Meek Mill, Rick Ross, then Joe Budden chimed in, and it didn't feel fair to me that a brother like Joe Budden, who I never met before, would, I heard you call him out on the new, record, yeah, on yeah. a new song, yeah, because he had three full podcast episodes where. I'm a topic of discussion of his, you know, mm -hmm. and he gets to, in long form uh, content, gets to speak his piece about who he thinks D1 is and how he thinks D1 is just a clout chaser and not mm -hmm. legit and da 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 and speaking down on even my faith, you heard me, the fact that I'm Christian and right. all this type of stuff. And I was like, dang, based on the way I put content out, all I got is songs and maybe 90 second reels on Instagram. on Instagram. So I love the fact of, and salute to you even for, with podcasting, when you're really a thinker, you hear me? Like yeah. you're really a thinker and right. a listener. So it, it allows you to have these longer conversations to where you can understand someone's heart and their thought process behind what they're doing. Yeah, it's almost like when you watch like uh, the news mm -hmm. and people like form opinions based on like, Four people on TV trying to each get in their 45 second point as mm -hmm. opposed to like listening to like a politician or somebody speak on like a long form co conversation where mm -hmm. you could get like further understanding. It's the same shit. It's like 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 you said, like now you can articulate your points in a greater way if you have your own podcast. And then Kendrick Lamar just threw me the alley-oop of all alley-oops last week. You heard me? Shout nah, the Kendrick shit's crazy. Like, where were you when you when you heard I on, it? I was on Instagram Live. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram Live because my city, New Orleans, was very mad with me. I was like public enemy number one last week to New Orleans because when the announcement came out that Kendrick was performing at the Super Bowl, uh, so many people in New Orleans were mad, super upset that it wasn't Lil Wayne. I, saw, I noticed. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm from New Orleans. You of know, that's you my are. hometown. Yeah. Man, for me to say, like, yo, like, let's keep it a buck. You heard me? Like, where's this sense of entitlement coming from? Like, the artist has to be somebody from New Orleans just because the Super Bowl is right. here, number one. And number two, I was keeping it 100. I'm a former middle school teacher. I'm a pro college professor. I'm a dude whose hip hop music is clearly message driven. You right. know what I'm saying? It, it got message mixed in with dope beats and, and dope flow and all that. So when we talk about the message, I was like, let's keep it 100 about the message that Wayne has often glorified mm -hmm. in his music. You know what I'm saying? Like, like is that something that is necessarily conducive to a hundred million plus audience who's going to be watching the Super Bowl halftime. Right. And just me saying that, bro, it's the same stuff I was saying with Rick Ross. And, and, and you know, back then, uh, almost a year ago, right. and the city had my back then, but now, now because it applied to somebody from the city. I just said, like, obviously Wayne's a legend, but I think, like, if you just, if you're the Super Bowl and you're the NFL, mm -hmm. like, he just did... WrestleMania and forgot a lot of his lyrics and it was it was a less than best performance and like he's just had like interesting on stage situations over the last few years where he's like walked off and like mm -hmm. I just don't know if I'm like yo like Kendrick also happens to be like the number I mean like having a crazy year yeah. and he's Kendrick Lamar like yeah, what are bro. we talking about like yeah. over the last t decade like that's the move he's been a glitch in the matrix in that he clearly has a message in his music that's about pushing things forward in life, right? Progressive, sure. but has become as mainstream as you could get. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's and he's that's always rare. and he's always been that. That's rare, bro. It's never he's never not done what he is doing. So, what message do we want to send to the kids at home? Do we want to send a message that like it's possible to stand for something? You know, to have some morals, values, and principles, and make it, and make it right. That's a fire message to send. You heard me. Right. So, when I got the announcement that Kendrick shouted me out in his new song, I was on Instagram Live explaining this to a lot of people in my city who were mad at my commentary on the Super Bowl, and all of a sudden. The comments got flooded with a wave of new people saying, Kendrick Lamar just shouted you out. Oh, Yo, so Kendrick fire. just mentioned you. So I didn't know if it was real or not, but I was like, whether or not that's real, I they say, he's giving you your flowers. This is amazing. I said, the thing about flowers, y'all, is that flowers eventually die. Mm. I said, so if it's true what y'all are saying, salute to Kendrick. I love you, my brother. Thank you. But I want everybody watching this live to know that I do this for the approval 
of somebody that ain't that ain't even here, and that's God. You feel right. me? Because for me, I've had the approval from the bootleg Cavs, now the Kendrick Lamars, the fans. But I see how quick them same fans will turn on you. For sure. So when they talk about like you getting these flowers and you supposed to be just almost like mama I made it type of moment I just know how to not get too high on the highs and mm -hmm. not get too low on the lows you know people should do that in life in life bro like, yeah. I, so I was like yo it's, it's amazing that in the same week I'm experiencing condemnation from my city mm -hmm. everything from people making death threats to saying you can't come back to the city and you canceled in New Orleans and all this stuff to elevation and validation right. from Kendrick saying I want to be empathetic, a heart like D1. You know what I'm saying? I want to I know what he was, what the end of that line was because he stopped. What you think it was? I don't know. But it was, I, 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 well, he said, but I will. He said, I want to be empathetic. But I like, will. But I will. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So you could imagine. No, nah, for like. sure. No, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I thought that was super dope, though. So for you, like, um, like you said, man, like, I feel like you've, Always been pushing positivity, always been very, very, like, ahead of the curve in terms of, like, I mean, not even ahead of the curve. You've always been, like, integrity first as a person and, you know, as an artist and as everything else comes after that, right? But I wonder for you, like, does that just feel good knowing that, like, man, you just, you, you've you gone, gone through it with, you know, Meek Mill, Rick Ross, and, and, and people, you know, saying A, B, and C about you, but to, like, have the guy... You know, in my opinion, you know, I've had Kendrick in my top five for probably like six years. Uh, and I think after this last 12 months, it's either him or Hove as the, the GOAT, you know, mm. if I'm being honest. Like, mm. personally, for my list, I always had him around four or five. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think he's, you know, when it's all said and done, he's going to be the greatest of all time, you know, with all due respect to Jay-Z. But uh, what's that feel like, though, man? Like, it's just, it's validation that, even when people try to tell me that I'm crazy or that I could go further, faster, if I switch my message right. up, it's just like, it's proof that the people who y'all look up to and the people who y'all might feel like can do no wrong in y'all eyes, those people are actually saluting a brother that's just been consistent the whole time. And that it's like, hey, he's going to get where he's destined to be in the time he was destined to be there. Because I've always put impact over income. You know what I mean? You get into this game, and if you're seeking out, man, just today, bro. So Kevin Lyles stepped down uh, as yeah. at, from uh, 300 Entertainment yeah. or, or uh, as, the, as the head guy. Um, Diddy, they said Diddy is arrested as of yesterday, trying to get out on 50 million. I heard on TMZ they said he offered 50 million dollars bond, uh, bond and to, they denied it, to get out. Yeah. I think they denied it. You know, bro, like the empire is crumbling. The empire as we knew it in hip hop, to where all of this stuff that glorifies what is evil, like like it's evil. We we burying rich homie Quan today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Open casket funeral televised. So we seeing a brother in the culture that's being buried. God bless his soul, you know, and prayers out to his family and friends. We're seeing that happen. And we're seeing people who have been gatekeepers for the longest who have defined what music is going to get the green button pressed and, and get all the marketing dollars put behind it. People who have made it cool to love, to be in love with the jewelry, the money, the Music that's glorifying uh, drug use mm -hmm. and glorifying the disrespect of women. But now we're seeing these people go to jail. Now we're seeing people that's passing away in front of our face. And everybody is saying, that was way too soon. So it's like, now what? It can't just be entertainment. All the people in the culture who try to tell me all these years, Kev, man, it's just entertainment, bro. You just... Always got something to complain about. Won't you just let people get their money? That's what, uh, that's what Rick, Ro Rick Ross was saying. It's like, yo, I do this music, but I feed my hood turkeys during Thanksgiving, you know? And literally in his mind, that justifies making the soundtrack to selling dope and rapping about the glorification of murder and disrespecting women and all that. And it's like, are you serious, bro? In your mind, it makes sense because this is just how I feed my family. But then over here, here's the good I'm doing in the community. We got to have these difficult conversations in the culture right now. 